Well, the sun is out, Santa. It's bright and cleary and hot, actually. And you can see the little covers come down and, well, it's toilet time. I think that's the only reason she actually exited the tree is that it was time just to alleviate oneself, which is uh, totally understandable. I, I feel like many of us could sympathize with poor little shadow's cub that needed to go to the loo in an uncomfortable spot and so she just jumped down she's quite brave though because the hyenas are not far away and they're kind of still hanging around in this area and she's come down and just doesn't really pay too much attention to them she's just like whatever and hyenas I haven't really come in to give her any trouble either so she's got a situation where she can just kind of take it a bit easy she was eyeing up mom's sort of position in the tree and was looking like she might head up that way there you go you see she kind of just gives a little glance and once she realizes mom is in the way she kind of then sort of saunters off i think she's going to find herself a nice shady spot to lie down in maybe somewhere around there nope still looking up at mom longingly as if to say please mom come down i want to go and eat i want to go and sit where you are i don't want to be down here where there's no food i don't know where she's heading to she's not exactly much shade where she's going now it seems to be fairly open you can see she's walking now straight into the sun so not 100% sure where she's heading, but well, she's on her own little mission, and why not? I suppose if you're a little cub, you can decide exactly where you want to be for yourself. There we go. And she's now positioned herself. Now, of course, I've got the aerial, unfortunately, in the way a little bit, which is not ideal. Erin, big cat claws can break. I've seen it happen uh, to lionesses and lions that have climbed trees before, so their claws can break. will regrow again. It's much like your toenail. If your toenail comes off, it does grow back again. It's the same with their claws. It just takes a bit of time until they get it right and until they're able to blend it all, well, to be able to get it back and working functionally again. But they do break from time to time. You can imagine the amount of stress and strain that's put on those claws sometimes, particularly when an uh, adult female like this is taking up an impala carcass that weighs, you know, double what she does, um, or maybe not double, but close to, and as well as her own weight up. Sometimes those claws are put under serious strain and you might find a little break or a chip comes out of it or the tip breaks off. And so that will regrow and that's why they constantly are honing their claws so you'll see they go up to a tree and they kind of scratch on the tree itself and that's just to sharpen those claws up and make sure that they're in good condition there comes shadow where are you going girl what are you doing no wonder we were battling to track them yesterday if she was moving around like this i imagine it would be very similar to how she was yesterday and it makes it tough to track their animals when they do circles like this it's not easy but there we go. No, that's a much better, shadier spot that she's decided to spend some time in. You can see she's sniffing around there. I wonder if maybe that's where they disemboweled it and got rid of some of that stomach content. Were you not finished toilet time? Well, that seems like a little bit of an afterthought, doesn't it? But still watching mom ever so closely. Hyenas are still sleeping. I can see them in the distance. They're kind of just having it. Let's see. Michelle, my favorite big cat to study would be definitely these guys. I, I seriously enjoy spending time with leopards. They are my by far my favorite animal, not even of the of the cats or predators. I just love spending time with them themselves. And I find their dynamics incredibly interesting. I, I feel like there's a lot of differences between areas that they spend time in and there's a lot of behavioral differences in leopards and a lot that we don't understand. As we're now spending a lot more time with them and we're able to access sort of times that are a little bit unusual and we, we spend long periods we're able to see patterns and behavior that typically was not really and un well understood and so if you think of um, something like the Tum the Hosanna following Tandi story the three male leopards in the same sighting that we had the other day uh, where Tingana, Tamba and Hosanna all st were around a kill together and we're showing no real aggression these kind of things are all different things that uh, if you read books, would tell you that's impossible. It wouldn't happen, and that's not true. So I love watching leopards in the fact that they, they break the rules a lot of the time, and they are incredibly good at adapting to their environment to be able to survive and adapting to an area to be able to 
thrive and, and grow and, and populations to thrive in those areas and they're the most successful of the big cats if we look across Africa unfortunately lions given that they, their size have been poached and hunted and, and are fairly easy to find in comparison to a leopard and well cheetah we know we've also been in a steady decline as well so leopards really have done the best out of all of them and it's because of how adaptable they are that they occur in all kinds of different environments from urban environments to savannas to mountains to riverine to even being seen on beaches in parts of the of Africa you know, they, they really can move around everywhere and survive everywhere so and it's an amazing animal just to watch it's it's powerful it's beautiful and and they display a lot of characteristics that I just like I like the fact that they have to struggle against all of this on their own and that they still are as successful um, as we see them so this is by far my favorite big cat um, I, I know a lot of people will be lions and a lot of people love lions and, and want to follow them I don't know. For me, lions are, are great, and I, I do like spending time with lions, and I, I love watching them um, move around, but nothing is better than spending time with a leopard, that's for sure. Now, Shadow is funny, because only now that the cub is kind of showing interest and is looking up at mom and trying to kind of get up there, she's starting to feed again. It's almost like she has to just show the cub, no, I'm still hungry and I'm still eating, you have to wait there. But I think the little one is starting to kind of want to get up and, and go that direction but it knows it knows if mom is there it, it won't go up and this is an interesting part about leopard behavior is that for some reason they just don't share carcasses they will just give each other turns more than anything else and so they feed and then they once they've had their full they move away and the next one comes in it's a strange thing you know if you look at lions they'll all mob a carcass and they'll all eat and crunch and bite and everybody has a feed together whereas leopards seem to be far more civil about the whole process as they go about their business so unfortunately shadows cub knows that it's just good manners to be patient and wait ryan the cub won't experiment with going away from mom yet it's it, at the moment it's still small it knows that it, mom is safe that's where its safety point is is mom will protect it mom will provide food for it so venturing away from mom is a bad idea um, so you'll find that it'll play around and it'll run ahead of mom and it'll run behind her and it'll go up and down trees and all those kind of things but it's not going to venture away in terms of trying to find its own area to go and mess around in that's for it still has that bond with mom and it knows mom is its secure source and its secure food um, sort of area and, and knows that where mom is that's where she's going to thrive and be healthy so she's not going to move away from that there's lots of big scary things out there that she doesn't want to encounter and so you find that these cubs try and stay with mom as long as possible and i was saying earlier that there i mean there's some cubs that have even stayed until three and a half and it's only when mom starts getting aggressive with this cub that she then starts to try and forge her, her own way and try and move away and find her own little period place to settle and to to end up developing so no little one won't venture it will try and stay as close as possible i mean they might have a little kind of wonder if they left somewhere so if mom leaves her let's say it's treehouse dam she might wander around treehouse dam a bit and chase the odd thing here and there but she's not going to go too far she's not going to end up in a situation where she's you know wandered off towards little gari or to chitwa or to mala mala or something like that she's going to stay fairly localized to where mom left her for now as like i say as the the bond starts breaking down and shadow starts getting aggressive with her so she's going to have to start moving and heading into different areas in order to be able to um to be able to survive and set up her own territory and you can see she's awake now because there's just two vehicles that have just joined us simultaneously and so i think cub is just a bit bewildered by all of the the noise and things that are going on at once which is why it shouldn't really happen but anyway now i wonder